AWS certifications, are they worth doing? And can AWS certifications alone guarantee you a high paying job working with cloud technology and AWS? Stay tuned as we cut through all the hype around AWS certifications and understand the real world benefits of having AWS certifications. With so many people having AWS certifications these days, uh, do they still matter in terms of helping your resume stand out from the crowd and actually translate into getting you started with a new career in the cloud technology domain or uh, help get you that promotion? Now, I started my AWS certification journey back in early 2016, and over the course of a few months, I was fully AWS certified. Uh, now, back then, the AWS certification landscape looked a lot different. Uh, there were only three associate level certifications and two professional level certifications. Over the years, a variety of new AWS certifications have been added. Uh, some of the certifications were actually broken apart, like the uh, big data specialty one. Uh, which was split into uh, a database and analytics specialty certification. Then some certifications I did, like the Alexa Skill Builder specialty, have been uh, retired completely. Overall, I feel AWS does a you know good job around adapting their certification program to keep it relevant and in line with the pace the AWS platform and other cloud computing and related technology areas are moving. From watching these certifications evolve over the last seven years, the AWS training and certification team is definitely kept a pulse on, you know, what current skills and areas of knowledge are required by their customers uh, to be effective in a variety of cloud-based technology professional roles. So back to that question, are AWS certifications worth doing? Well, of course, the obvious answer here is it depends. But let's actually break this down to see why AWS certifications may be worth your time, effort, and hard-earned money. Now, to start this off, I figured I'd share my own personal AWS certification journey. Uh, my motivations and overall thought process over the years. There may be some viewers out there that can relate to where I was, you know, starting from and my thought process along the way and ultimately help making your own certification decision. So back in 2016, I was working as a cloud infrastructure engineer as part of a great team operating a really large private cloud environment. Then came a point where the organization was after some extra compute capacity to support a mobile application launch. And uh, to get this compute capacity uh, quickly, we started to tap into public cloud providers and a hybrid model for some uh, burst capacity to handle the expected application launch load. Now, I had played around with AWS a little bit on my own off and on prior to this, uh, but this was really my first real production level exposure to AWS. And after getting involved with AWS at this larger production scale, uh, I was hooked on the possibilities that public cloud providers can offer and uh, went a little crazy trying to learn everything I could about AWS. Now, while I got some on-the-job exposure to AWS, uh, the scope of the business needs at the time and a variety of factors, uh, I was still largely working on our private cloud environments and not getting much day-to-day -day exposure to really learn and ramp up on AWS as fast as I wanted. Uh, so I kept digging around on uh, AWS documentation and trying things out on my own uh, personal account. Uh, stumbling around and learning random things as I went. Then I came across the AWS certifications and things really started to align with how I was trying to learn AWS on my own. I was looking through the AWS Solutions Architect Associate Exam Guide Blueprint where AWS had all the you know various domains and topics broken down and it really felt like I struck gold at that time. Uh, I had zero interest really in the certification part of it all but the exam guide suddenly gave me a framework of topic areas to study and learn. Then when looking at the other associate and professional level exam guides, there was this clear progression between the technology domains and these other topic areas. Uh, I kind of got the sense of the different depths of knowledge needed for the different certification tracks and uh, you know what steps uh, or leap uh, to the professional level certs look like. So now that I was armed with a framework of these different AWS topics and services to learn, uh, it made my self-study efforts a lot more focused. Uh, rather than randomly learning an AWS service in isolation, the exam certification guides pushed me to think more about solving different technical problems and building solutions using multiple AWS services together. So long story short here, I picked away at learning AWS on my own using the uh, AWS exam certification blueprints as a guide. Uh, combined with a bit of uh, on-the-job exposure at the time, I felt I was making great progress around understanding the AWS platform and its core services. Now, I don't know what really uh, triggered it, but at some point I figured I'd been you know, more or less passively studying for the Solutions Architect Associate exam since I was using the exam blueprint to put some structure to what I wanted to learn on my own that I you know, might as well try taking the exam and see what happens. Uh, so I pushed forward, spending some extra time reviewing areas in the exam blueprint. Uh, I'd stumbled across a Udemy course by Ryan Cronenberg, uh, which helped fill in any you know, missing knowledge gaps I had 
and uh, wrote the exam. Now, from what I remember, I was pretty nervous taking the exam, but I uh, got through it and passed. So at this point, I was now officially AWS certified. Uh, I knew there was a lot of topic overlap between the remaining associate level exams and felt I already had you know, 70 or 80% of what I needed to know etched in my brain, having just gone through the uh, Solutions Architects Associate exam. So I quickly started studying for those remaining associate exams. Uh, I passed the Developer Associate certification about two weeks later, and then the uh, SysOps Administrator won about three weeks after that. So after getting all the associate level certifications, I took a little break and slowly started diving into the much uh, bigger breadth and depth of the professional level exams. So about six months after getting the associate certifications, uh, I went for the Solutions Architect professional exam and passed that one. Uh, I then continued the momentum after that and went for the DevOps engineer professional exam uh, about two months later and passed that one as well. Uh, so at this point, I was fully AWS certified. Uh, again, back in 2016, uh, early 2017, there were just these five AWS certifications available. Now, I don't want to put you to sleep here with my whole life story, uh, but for me, the AWS certification journey has been truly life-changing. Uh, it's opened so many doors for me for my career, and uh, since that point, I've had the opportunity to work with many brilliant colleagues and work on interesting and impactful projects with some uh, great companies and clients along the way. Having been all self-taught through my IT career, I feel that AWS certifications were very helpful in validating my new cloud and AWS skills and uh, really helping me stand out. So that was a bit of an overview of my start on AWS certifications uh, back in 2016, uh, but things have changed a lot since then. There's been an explosion in popularity with these AWS certifications, and I'd say it's a lot harder today to really stand out with AWS certifications alone. However, from what I've seen across tons of job postings and my own experience, is that AWS certifications are now more the baseline expectation. So while AWS certifications may not make you uh, stand out quite as much today, uh, but they'll help ensure that your resume is not overlooked if you're competing with other candidates that actually have AWS certifications themselves. So circling back to, are AWS certifications worth it for you? Uh, reflect on why you're thinking about AWS certifications in the first place. Uh, what do you expect will happen once you have one or multiple AWS certifications? So again, I don't feel AWS certifications today will make you really stand out from the crowd as much as they did a few years back, but having them will uh, level the playing field and be sure to put you in the race. Now, are AWS certifications required for being successful in a cloud engineer, uh, solutions architect, or uh, DevOps type of role? Absolutely not. And a lot of employers actually look past the certification aspect and rely on their interview process to gauge a candidate's skill level and ensure they're a good fit for the role. During my interview process with AWS, uh, certifications never really came up from what I remember. Now, they may have been a factor in getting the interview in the first place at the recruiter stage and uh, pre-screening steps, but they didn't specifically come up uh, during the interview process. Then when I was working at AWS, I went through their Making Great Hiring Decisions training, which was great, but the focus of the training there was more around interviewing around their uh, well-known Amazon leadership principles and hiring for culture. Uh, certifications uh, weren't really a factor that came into the picture. Now, once you start at AWS, uh, there's certainly a big training and development aspect to your job role expectations, and achieving AWS certifications is a you know, very important part of that. Uh, but to get in the door at AWS, certifications wasn't really a primary factor then, and uh, I doubt it still is today. The thing is, though, that if you look at many cloud and DevOps-based job descriptions today, where they use AWS in the company, uh, many are calling out AWS certifications as either a requirement or with a strong preference given to those with AWS certifications. Now, think about this from the employer side of things. Uh, a hiring manager needs to fill a position on their team. Uh, they create a job description based on the requirements of the role and uh, mention the AWS certification requirements or list them as uh, nice-to-haves. Uh, so this job description goes down to their uh, HR recruitment teams and the job posting is made public. And then, you know, tons of applications and resumes start flying in for that role. Now, as a recruiter in that company, uh, they may not necessarily be a technical person or even have much understanding about what that role is actually about. They're just comparing the skills, experience, and certification requirements listed in that job description to what's presented by the candidates in the pile of resumes they received. And in some cases, a lot of this initial screening is automated as well. Many talent management software tools can search across these resumes and bubble up the best fit solely based on keyword search criteria. Uh, so if an AWS certification is listed as a uh, requirement for that job role, and resumes are being uh, looked at by a person or by some sort of search automation tools, uh, you want to be sure that you have AWS certifications listed on your resume to even make that pass that uh, you know, initial cut. Now, I'm not saying this is uh, right or wrong, because uh, there could be amazing people perfect for the role with tons of experience, 
They just don't have the AWS certifications to their name. Uh, but since they wouldn't make the initial cut during the pre-screening process, they typically wouldn't even get the chance in the interview process to really show what they're capable of. Now, another thing to be aware of is AWS has these different partner programs available for companies that offer uh, you know, software consulting-based services uh, built around helping customers take advantage of all that AWS has to offer and uh, help you know, accelerate their cloud adoption journey. Now, many of these partner programs have certification requirements from AWS. So for a consulting company or software vendor to achieve a given partner status and achieve higher uh, status tiers within that partner category, uh, the partner company has to have staff that meet a certain number of AWS certification requirements, along with a variety of other criteria to achieve that partner status. Uh, so for these companies that are AWS partners or wanting to be uh, hiring people that are coming to them uh, with AWS certifications already is a tremendous bonus. These AWS partner companies often make certifications a key component of what they're looking for during the hiring process, since it's an important requirement for them as a business to achieve and maintain their AWS partner status. Now, another aspect certifications bring to the table, I think, is they show your commitment and ability to learn new skills. If someone has a few AWS certifications, you know they've put in the time and have the dedication to stick with learning new material. They're likely very resourceful people having had go through tons of AWS documentation and practice implementing their own solutions and hunting around for answers and troubleshooting when things aren't working as expected. Uh, and to me, this is really critical and an important trait for anyone wanting to work in uh, AWS and different cloud technologies. Things are moving so fast in this field. Uh, literally every few days, there's a bunch of new AWS features and services that are added. And the whole surrounding cloud and DevOps ecosystem of tools and methodologies evolve so rapidly. Companies need individuals in these roles that are extremely resourceful and they're constantly learning and adapting to changes in the space. I feel certifications are a good indicator of this ability to learn and constantly upskill themselves. So even with all the people out there with AWS certifications today, I still feel AWS certifications are very important to have because it helps you level the playing field if you're planning to start a career in cloud technology and working with AWS or uh, you're wanting to take the next step in your career through uh, job promotion. Now, are AWS certifications enough to guarantee you a job in cloud computing, though? The short answer here is no. Uh, AWS certifications or any IT certifications are typically not going to guarantee you a job by themselves. However, having the certifications will likely be an important factor to get you through those uh, pre-screening steps in the recruitment process. They'll help you stand out as a self-learner who's you know, willing to put in the effort to improve their own skills, and a person that can deliver more value long-term to the company in that type of role. Now, with all this being said, uh, go back to when I ask you to reflect on why you're interested in AWS certifications. Uh, what's your personal motivation and expectations around these certifications? Now, if you expect to instantly get hired today with just some AWS certifications and no other experience, it's just not realistic today for most positions. AWS certifications, though, can help ensure your resume doesn't get it thrown out of the pile from the very start. Uh, since many of these job descriptions have uh, AWS certs listed as requirements or nice-to-haves, the AWS certifications can you know, help you get through the pre-screening process and get to the real interviews where you can demonstrate your experience. So if you're looking to upskill yourself, uh, show you're a resourceful and committed self-learner, and want to really level the playing field and help stand out as you start or progress your career in cloud technology and AWS, uh, AWS certifications are well worth the time, cost, and effort. Now, if you're brand new to cloud and AWS and looking to get started, uh, definitely check out my AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner course and the other related videos here on the channel. Uh, there's a full uh, Cloud Practitioner course along with a practice exam video and uh, another one we did where we dive into the uh, Cloud Practitioner foundational uh, certification and just make sure it's right for you to uh, get started on your journey. Also, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell to stay up to date and informed. Uh, I'll be doing a future video soon exploring all the AWS certifications available today and uh, help you map out a plan of where to start and uh, which path you should take based on your specific starting point, uh, goals, and learning objectives. Now, before you go, uh, let me know in the comments if you're about to start or maybe you've already started with AWS certifications. Uh, what were your motivations for doing them and have they actually helped you land a job or advance your career? Or maybe you've decided that AWS certifications just aren't worth it for you in your situation. I'm curious to know why you decided not to do them as well. So thanks for watching and see you next time.